Rain, rain, go away. Come again some other day. The children's song makes it sound like we as humans can control Mother Nature's patterns of weather. We can just wish really, really hard, and we will have nothing but blue skies and low 60 temperatures. Yes, that is what is comfortable for me. I was born in Massachusetts, after all. But nowadays, extreme, volatile weather patterns are all too prevalent, and the toll they will take on our world is immense. According to the White House Office of Management and Budget, on April 7th of 2022, climate change and climate-related disasters could cost the United States government around $2 trillion per year in damages by 2100. Going further than just the economic cost, the World Health Organization predicts from October of 2021 that from 2030 to 2050, there will be an additional quarter of a million deaths every year from causes such as malaria, starvation, and heat stress, and other horrible maladies, all tying back to the effects of global warming. It may seem out of our hands, with large corporations and world governments not taking enough action to help the urgent situation at hand. In 2015, 193 parties from across the globe came together at the landmark Paris Agreement. They set goals and made pledges in order to keep global average temperature increase to below 1.5 degrees Celsius to avert disastrous effects. However, United Nations data from October of 2022 shows that with these pledges, we are only on track to be able to keep this temperature increase to below 2.5 degrees Celsius by the end of the century. Well, let me be clear, to preface, any individual, the average citizens of the world, are by no means responsible for causing this environmental crisis we are facing today, let alone responsible for solving it. It simply cannot be solved by one person. In the face of all of this, however, I will never concede that any individual action, big or small, is worthless. Things like eating less meat, using less energy and water, volunteering, voting, cutting down on trash, and educating are all examples of important and helpful steps that individuals can and should take if they're able to in the effort to save our planet. That list goes on and on, and honestly, I could talk for hours on end about the benefits of all of those. Due to my dinnertime ramblings, my family can attest to that one. But with this opportunity here today, I want to talk about how to relieve what experts call climate doomism and share how I think about individual action for the sake of the planet. The BBC defines climate doomism as the idea that we are past the point of being able to do anything at all about global warming and that humanity is highly likely to become extinct. I've faced this dread and hopelessness myself. There's a struggle of wanting to do something but not knowing where to start or simply believing that you can't possibly change the path the world is on. That can be demoralizing and scary. And unfortunately, I'm not alone in this regard when it comes to this stress over the future of the environment. In studies done in 2021 by the American Psychological Association, around 59% of people aged 16 to 25 years old, my age range, feel, quote, very or extremely worried about climate change. Furthermore, the APA also confirms that around two-thirds of U.S. adults feel at least a little eco-anxiety, as they put it. Fortunately, the Harvard Medical School has a solution. In a June 2022 article, they suggest prescribing some action. They claim when it comes to this eco-anxiety, it is, quote, the best treatment, but I'd be hard-pressed to find that at any pharmacies around here. But in all seriousness, it can give someone struggling with this anxiety some semblance of control and comfort, knowing that they are playing a part in combating this global threat, and it can help alleviate some of this hopelessness. On the flip side, however, of taking all this action, it is important to not burn yourself out. I am a delegate to the National High School Climate Forum, and in some of the meetings, some of my peers have expressed feeling exhausted with trying to shoulder all the responsibility of protecting the environment. For people who take environmentalism very seriously, even a minor slip-up can make them feel very guilty, especially since they 
understand the impacts of their actions arguably better than anyone else. But again, as I said before, one single person isn't going to make or break the climate crisis or single-handedly save or destroy all of nature. It is not sustainable if you burn yourself out from trying to be too sustainable. And if you run out of steam, you cannot continue to do this crucial work that you are doing. So, of course, it is important to fight for the sake of planet Earth where we humans live. But in doing so, it is also necessary to recognize that we as humans and we all need things like time for leisure, relaxation, and sleep. We all have lives to live. And while we are just humans, acting as an individual is still very meaningful. There are rarely any major drawbacks from making even small changes to your life and taking little steps. So something like, say, reu using reusable bags, bottles, or containers makes a positive impact, regardless of the size of that impact. Doing something good is absolutely better than doing nothing, and definitely preferable to doing something that actively and directly harms the environment. Point zero 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 one is greater than zero, and definitely greater than negative one. You don't need to be a mathematician, or in this case, an environmental scientist, to figure that one out. This is the crux of my belief, that individual action, on top of being crucial for relieving despair over the fate of the planet, is also valuable in any form. If you lead an environmentally friendly, sustainable lifestyle that you can teach others about, people will notice. By the very nature of you living your life, taking these actions, raising awareness to these issues and solutions, you are planting a seed in the minds of others. And from there, those people can pass this on to, say, five more people they know. And those five can each pass it on to five more people they know. And, well, you can all see how that will compound and grow. With the Sustainability Committee here at Durham Academy, I have been working on a project to reduce trash in the dumpster so that it only needs to be emptied once per week rather than twice per week. After a successful dumpster dive last year, we discovered that paper towels were the largest source of waste in our trash stream. So in response to this, we spread awareness about composting paper towels and set up bins and bathrooms specifically for these paper towels, and it was very effective. Around eight months later, some of my fellow committee members and I received an amazing opportunity to speak to the Board of Trustees and share our work. Soon after, one of the members reached out to us about composting paper towels at his local Planet Fitness. Picture that. One person's idea spreads throughout a school, reaches a business, permeates that business, reaches other businesses, inspires them, inspires governments. The idea of the ripple effect can be a little cliche, but it cannot be ignored in this regard. So where does this leave us on the role of individual action in the climate crisis we are facing right now? Well, as we've seen, it is larger than any one person, and we can't place the blame on individuals and their lifestyles. We still need to demand change from corporations and governments alike, as they are the heavy hitters in the fight to save our planet. However, at the same time, individual action still certainly has its merits. Doing something good is always going to be better than doing nothing at all. And one single person can raise the scope of their actions beyond themselves and influence others via the ripple effect. And in doing so, they can also relieve some climate doomism for themselves and for others. So to conclude today, here's a little piece of wisdom I cooked up on my own in an eighth grade slam poem about protecting the environment. A storm is just millions of single drops of rain. Sure, there's some thunder and lightning, as in corporations and the government, but a flood is still pretty significant. And that rainfall would be less if it was missing even just one drop. That is simply empirically true. Yet at the same time, it would also be greater with just one more little drop. Simply empirically true. 
So while I obviously don't want more climate-related disasters, such as floods and droughts, a la rain, rain, go away, I will always defend the importance of individual efforts. Thank you.